What's up friends, today we are here with some footage from EskateCon 2023 at the Shockboard Systems booth. I had the opportunity to talk to David from Shockboard about his awesome new innovation that they've got for Double Kingpin trucks, which is an independent suspension system. So, let's tune in and hear what he's got to say. Hey there, so I am Shockboard Systems and I have two systems right now that are products that you would add to a e-board platform like Evolve or Meepo or X-Way and it's an adaptive system. Two systems, Shockbox, trademark, patent pending, and the Trick Stick, trademark, patent pending. Let's we'll start with the suspension system. So the suspension system is an independent system that has a torsion spring component rather than a coilover component. It's got 40 millimeters of independent travel on the wheels so you can conform to uneven terrain on a trail or even an urban environment right you get better control you get better comfort it's proven right an independent suspended truly sprung suspension system is adaptive and desirable in any vehicle platform so now we finally have something that is scaled and adaptive to your common e-board so you don't have to commit to like a baja board or a mountain board this is like this is the niche right and you also get to keep all the cool geometry and benefit out of your dkp your double kingpin truck stays on the board right you don't have to trade out that nice carby feel you're going to supplement it with all these benefits so the main system is going to be what i call the drive wheel shock box you'll get the front component you'll get the rear component which has the motor mounts it'll have a new belt for this for the distance between your axle and the motor when you mount it it'll have a motor guard kit that will be sold independently so if you want to protect your motors with your typical motor guard kit that'll also be sold you can supplement but the main shock box drive wheel system will come with the bolts a point of sale or the belt appropriate for your dimension usually it's around 415 for that step up you just drop your axles off you take your wheels and motors off you put my systems on you put all that back on bam you got independent suspension you're ready to go the trick stick is a pretty cool thing it has got a two-fold targeted utility you can see here on the display i'll position them out of the way this is sort of the passive arrangement for the handles where they're on your board, but they're just out of the way. And just like the suspension system, we can example it here. You get the kit and it consists of a base plate and all the top assemblies. You get longer screws, you get spacers included with your kit. And the spacers help you adapt to the different dimensions of your board and also the customization of the handle and the height that you'll want to achieve which we'll get into in just a moment so with the base plate you have the top component that just slides over and you've got some adjustability there it's adaptive so you don't have to worry about drilling into your board or putting it in an inconvenient location it goes right on top of that that truck flange Right? So is that so you're able to use both drop through and uh, Yes, you can use a drop through. If you have a bottom mount with no drop through, you can use it there. Some of the drop throughs are mortise like the Hadian. And we'll come over to the Hadian from Evolve and show you what's up with the trick stick. So the trick stick will be sold individually. You can buy a pair of them to put front and back or you could just have it in the front. We'll go to that passive position and I'll show you the features. So so the real desire for having a front location is the pedestrian mode, right? So you can splay it out to 45 either direction. And when you're on the side of your board and you want to go into a store, you just pick it up and you just walk down the street, right? Yeah. Now you're done. You're like, bam. I'm going to do some casual riding. I'm just going to spin out of the way. But then you're like, hey, guess what? This trail looks pretty freaking cool. I'm going to get pretty crazy. I'm regular footed, but if you're goofy footed, you can do this. But when you're regular, you can spin it to this direction. Okay, so I was going to Now you got a next best thing to a binding. You've got a contact point, control point for your foot. 
this. And you can manipulate your board. You can jump your board. Yes. You can wheel your board. You can hop your board around. It's actually really good too, just for just for riding. Even if you don't want to get air time, you can control your board better with that contact point here. Man, you got so much motion on the motors back there when you jump on it. Yeah, yeah. People are really intrigued by that articulation with the motors. But you can see the suspension system working. Now the interesting thing about this is that with the torsion spring system, and like any independent suspension system like a propel board, you kind of suffer from the turning radius. Because when you engage your board, you have this compressive component with the in, the in turn side of your wheel. But honestly, if you demo these boards with this system, it's not that bad. And in fact, I would argue that you get this better feeling. You get kind of a three-dimensional floaty, powdery feel. So if you're really into that surfing, carving, double kingpin truck, yeah. it just makes it that much more fun. And then when you get on a trail or you want to drop off a vertical curb, oh my God, you get like cushy awesome. float control. You know, if you hit a curb at a 45 or an embankment, you don't get that compelled steering geometry which takes you into it or takes you out of it because now you're you're initiating a turn with your truck trying to conform right. to terrain. And you can with really it. get that with double king pin trucks. Like I right. a lot of people don't like double king pins because they aren't stable at speed typically. I like them for up to a certain speed, but I do notice when you go into curbs and stuff like that, you get a lot of side to side motion from yeah. the truck. So uh, I guess the question is, is this only available for double kingpin trucks? Right now it is. You, you could put it on a single, but I haven't I haven't tested it on the in the other world. Okay. Now right now it is available for that geometry. In the future I think I will have iterations that probably will adapt to other systems like RP, RKVs. I don't know yet. We'll see. Um, the handle also is a point a talking point so these are just standard mountain bike grips right. you can get any single clamp mountain bike grip you want to put on it you can customize colors you can customize the grip pattern so when we have our final inventory sometime late summer we'll have a custom grip that will be sold with this which will have a flatter profile for a better contact patch on your foot. It'll have a slight turn down here, so you'll have a little bit more control with it. But if you still want to have a customized experience, you can just get any standard 22 millimeter custom single clamp grip that you want. You want a fancy color that I don't have? Put your fancy color on. People love customization, I do too. That was the inspiration. Let's pause it for one moment and we'll go back to the table so I've got some of the more uh, close up details. So yes, I actually got in the in the uh, demo boards I have the pivot cups for a time specified for a long depot. So there'll probably be future links to those things depending on the point of sale the work that you're targeting. So looking at the back here, I see it. Yeah, so the center component here and the thread. So there is a, uh, a mechanical component in here. It's defined as the pivot axle, and that's what gives us the preload, and that's what constrains the pivot point across the way for the motion. Yes, the rider weight will be adjusted with the preload of the spring. Just like a coilover, you can adapt to your riding style, and you can more importantly adapt to your rider weight to give you the optimized performance of, of a sprung system. So in this scenario here, with this center axle and the exposure of the slot, this allows you to have this handle to preload the mechanism according to like the specifications that you want. So when you, the rider weight will be anything from just like, you know, small teens, it could be a 10 year old, all the way up to just about 200 pounds. The target eventually will be above that, but right now we're kind of, we're, we're still prototyping the 200. So the preload will just be a certain degree with a torsion spring, and that will, spring weight will remain the same, but the initiation of the spring actually changes 
with the load when you preload, just like any spring. So when you put the system on, what you'll do, this little M8 bolt will not be in there. You'll have this handle component on, and then you will draw the preload, depending on the orientation of the center component, to the degree of preload that's targeted for the rider. And when you get there, the threaded tap will actually appear in this constrained hole and you'll drop your bolt in, you'll tighten it down, and you'll have a Belleville washer that will hold it in place. And then you... It's not right now. There are plans to do an iteration in the future, but right now, yes, you will target your preload and it will be there. Now, if you want to change it, you can take the wings off and you can adjust that pivot axle for another targeted preload. So right now I have the Mipa motor on, which is a lighter link. I think these are what sixty. 74. Yeah, so 6374 right now is what I've maxed out on. Oh, oh yeah, so there's adjustability, and I'll pull this up. This is one cool feature. The motor guards are not fastened with traditional fasteners. They're just a tension on. So they have these little things, and they just tension on. These are actually 3D printed functional nylon 12 components. And uh, I'm trying to eliminate and simplify things. So if I can eliminate it faster without sacrificing the integrity of strength, I'm gonna do that, which I've done here. It makes it really easy to look at your belt, to look at your gear, and make sure things okay without having to unscrew it. But I'm taking that off so we can example. The profile for the motor is much like all the other systems out there with motor mounts, right? You have adjustability. So you can tension your belt appropriately. You can get your belt on. It's baked in. And you can see that the motor mount is a separate piece from this truck wing. It's secured by a single M6 um, flathead bolt that is uh, countersunk. But its real constraint here is the nested profile. So all of the forces are actually that are incurred here with the motor fighting its position that's locked in are just run through the geometry of the aluminum. Right, so in here you have a large bolt that is yes. replacing the hanger. So is this yes. just a thick like M10 bolt? This is an M10 12.9 grade bolt with a decrement coating. So it's highly corrosion resistant, but it's the strongest alloy you can get. It's also stepped up to 10 millimeters, right? Yes. So the pivot bearings, right, that aren't the wheel bearings that are integrated and sold with this are from a company called Enduro. And they are specifically designed for pivot structures and they come from the mountain biking industry so their bearings designed for all those torsional weird forces beyond radial forces that are that are always happening in some kind of pivot radial system like a suspension system in a mountain bike so that will be a lot of weird force going on here so you have like the torque coming down from the motor you have the torque coming back up from the wheels yeah there's some there's some complication but i think we've done a really good job Job of simplifying the sophisticated necessary engineering parameters in this thing and it gives it a really a cool aesthetic appeal you can kind of see the gap here in the center component and you can kind of kind of see the torsion spring here you can also kind of notice the uh, this little tab this actually co constrains the movement right there's a bumper over that that is a urethane bumper um, it's a it's an ADA durometer. I mean, like all bumpers and bump stops, eventually they'll be worn out. Uh, but I expect there'll be extreme longevity. It's the same kind of stuff that you would use on a, a car suspension system for bumpers. It's the same type of urethane that we have in our um, 
in all of our bushings. It's just a, it's, it's specially targeted for its form and function there with its, its hardness. Well, it is metal, so it's all one piece, so it's not a separate component. So that's all 6061 T6 okay. all around. Yeah. So it says patent pending on there, and that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. What is your. It is patent pending. So we have. Oh, yeah. It's the whole thing. Okay. So we have. We have patent pending, which means it's a provisional patent. We have our patent status. It's not finalized yet, um, but rest assured, it is uh, intellectual property protection, and it's a utility patent, which means there's a there's a complex mechanical focus on that patenting process, and that has to do with all of the features with this. It really has to do with the fact that it's a torsion spring suspension system that is actually targeted for these truck platforms and the double ping pen. Same with the handle. Its patent is a utility patent designed and focused around its functionality with the eboard system and its adaptability, again, to this existing ubiquitous truck platform. We've seen a lot of awesome stuff here in this conversation, so thank you for that, David. And I'll be coming by later today to take a test ride on this and check it out. And uh, as a lot of you might know, I am one of the leaders in SD Eastgate, and I believe we're going to be getting one of these uh, shock block sets in San Diego later this summer. So if you're in the local area, maybe you'll be able to try it out then. But for now, you'll just have to wait for the testing video. Anyway, thank you so much. Here is David, right? David. David. Thank you so much. I appreciate All right. the time. Awesome. And, uh, we'll come by later for the demo. Right on. So, what are my short thoughts on the shock box and the trick stick? Well, I'm always open to looking at new Eastgate innovations, and this is definitely one of the coolest ones I've seen in the uh, <laughs> the past couple of months. So, this independent suspension system, I think, has a very high uh, potential to be something that a lot of people want to ride. I think that it has a lot of tuning to do. It's definitely not meant for heavier riders right now. Um, I was able to, you know, bottom it out by just stepping on the board a little hard. Um, I think this could be really awesome for taking two-in-ones off-roading, as long as it's compatible with enough different kinds of trucks. I do hope to see some RKP compatibility in the future, uh, because I think double kingpins really do introduce a lot more wobble into this kind of setup when you're <laughs> adding suspension on top of that. So. Um, stay tuned for the short testing video that I was able to record at Eastgate Con. I'm probably going to do a voiceover like the one before. And uh, yeah, stay safe, keep on riding, and peace out.